Greetings, I am Pastor Weaver, and I'm so excited that you decided to watch this worship experience. I believe it will aid in your spiritual journey in some way. If you are local, I would love to meet you in person and pray with you. We believe we are doing something unique in the body of Christ, and we would love to have your support and partnership. Your prayers, your presence, your financial contributions will allow this ministry to continue to be a vehicle of transformation and to grow. Your intentional sustained support moving forward will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Shalom. I'm going to share, I am going to share a few words with you on this Resurrection Sunday. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it under eight minutes. That's my goal. That's my goal. After you get your assignment, after you get your assignment. But I want to share something with you um, briefly. And I want to share something with you, hopefully, that you've never heard before or in the way that you've heard it before. But before we do that, um, on this Sunday, I want to start with a question. Um, and I want to start with a question because I want to see where you are. And the question is simply this. What does resurrection mean to you? One thing that I've doing this almost 20 years, more than, more than 20 years at this point, is that I never want us to go through the motions. And it's so easy to, to come on Easter Sunday and go through the motions of worship, performative worship, and have a great time and then go back to our lives. But I want to know, I want you, I want to give you a moment to actually discuss and talk about what does resurrection mean to you. So, you're going to have two minutes. You're going to get up. Every other row, you're going to turn to the person behind you, every other row, introduce yourself, and I want you to have a conversation about what does resurrection mean to you. Okay, so first row, turn around, third row, turn around, and so forth and so on. All right, you got two minutes and 30 seconds. Go, go. Hine matovu manayin shevera hingam ya. Hine matovu manayin shevera hingam ya. So we have a lot of business today. So that is a song that we've been learning. That is actually Psalms 133, and it means how good is it, how pleasant is it when we all come together? How good is it, how pleasant is it when we all come together? So that's in Hebrew. That's in the, one of the languages of the Bible. So thank you. Thank you, Sister Jean. All right. What does resurrection mean to you? Very simple. I'm going to do this in eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Okay. Go, go, go. Time me. Um... What I want to say, share with you today is don't get your R's confused. Because a lot of us confuse resurrection with other things, and therefore we're waiting for God to do something that we really should be doing ourselves. Not being clear about what resurrection is can cause us to get stuck waiting for something to happen when actually we should be doing what we need to be doing. So the first R, don't get confused, don't get your R's confused, don't confuse resurrection with recovery. Recovery is simply alignment, realignment, and time. There are some times in your life, there are some things in your life 
where you're praying for God to do something. You're praying for God to resurrect you, but you simply need to recover. And what do I mean by recover? What do I mean is that the situation that you went through was, was very traumatic and you need to realign yourself and give it time. That's it. Realign, realign with your creator, get back into knowing what you know, ground you, what is right, remind you of who you were created to be, realign yourself and give it time to recover. What I've learned doing this in 20 years, we take things way too personal. There are certain things that you are upset about and it has absolutely nothing to do with you. And if you allowed yourself a moment simply to recover, you would find out it's not about you. Realign. Now, some things are about you and you need to work those out. <laughs> Let me be clear. Some things are about you. But everything ain't about you. And some things we take personal and they have very little to do with us. And the way you get that perspective, you have to allow yourself to recover. Some things are just about aligning yourself back with God and giving it time. Giving it time. There were so many lessons that Jesus gave to the disciples that the disciples did not get in the moment. They needed time. They needed perspective to really appreciate what Jesus was saying to them in that moment. There are certain lessons that God has sown into your heart that you haven't unlocked yet because you haven't allowed yourself to recover. Don't confuse resurrection with recovery because sometimes you simply need to recover. The second R, resuscitation. Don't confuse resurrection with resuscitation. Resuscitation is when you put effort into something. In, in, the, in the physical sense, it's when you're breathing air into another body to bring it back. There are some things in your life that simply need more effort from you. And let me, let, me, let, me, let me say something connected to this. God is trying to breathe into some of you, but some of you are holding your breath. And God can't breathe into you because you won't allow anything in you because you think you know everything already. Oh. Resuscitation is, is, is the effort that we give and allowing, pe allowing the effort of other people to, I'm putting a lot of effort into this sermon. I hope you're receiving it. <laughs> Being open to the other efforts that people are trying to breathe into us. Resuscitation is about being open to the effort that other people are trying to sow into us and, and, and also putting more effort into the things that we want to see life in. Some people come to church just like this. I dare you to tell me something I don't know. I dare you. Maybe internally, maybe externally. Blocking, blocking that air from coming in. So don't confuse. So, so sometimes you, you want God to resurrect you, but God is saying, open up your mouth and receive the breath that I'm trying to give you. Open up your mouth and start breathing into other people. Stop complaining about everything you don't like. Why don't you start breathing into it and see what happens? Don't pray for resurrection until you try resuscitation. Are you still with me? Okay, rehabilitation. Now this is the one I wanna focus a little bit more on because this is so important for us coming out of Lent. Lent is 40 days, not including Sundays. And we just came out of a time of fasting, a time of, of repentance, a time of reflection. And some of us have been developing some habits over Lent. And you're saying, I'm so glad Lent's over now that I can go back. Now I can go back to doing what I was doing. And what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is if it was working for you for 40 days, keep on doing it. Don't stop it. 
What is rehabilitation? Rehabilitation is creating habits, creating habits that lead to life. There are some of us that are playing for, praying for resurrection, but we really need to be rehabilitated. We need to create some new habits in our life that will lead to greater life. Now, I want to I want to show you I want to show you why rehabilitation is so difficult in a very practical way. OK, thank you. Why rehabilitation is so difficult and why we give up on it. So I'm just going to give you just a one simple example from my life recently. So I recently. You, you, some of you know this, one of my favorite meals is sushi. I love sushi. I can eat sushi every single day, various types of sushi. And so I had got this idea in my, my mind over the last couple weeks. I said, you know what, I'm going to make my own sushi. <laughs> I'm not going to spend all this money. I can make it myself. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm on this journey. I'm trying to move forward. Let's see if I move forward. Let me see. Oh, let me, okay, let me see. Here we go. Okay. So, I got it. So, this is my journey into try to make sushi. So, I went out. I bought a sushi kit. I bought some seaweed paper. And I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this my way. And I'm going to customize it the way I like to do it. Okay? So, this is my first my first step. And I had the sushi paper, and I had the mat, and I had I put some rice on there, wild rice, and just rice that I already had in, in the refrigerator. And then I just used some vegetables. I used some sweet potatoes and some green beans. You know, so I said, you know what? You know, that's, I'm going, going to try. I'm going to try. You know, so I'm, I'm working on it. And then that's my first attempt. I, I sent this picture to my wife. She said, that's a nice burrito you made. Uh, <laughs> And so, so that, that was my first thing. It was kind of thick. It was kind of clunky. And this is how it came out. Wait for it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's how it came out. And that's kind of sometimes when we start habits, they don't look pretty when we just start. But I'm a persistent person, if you haven't realized that by now. So I gave it a second try. I gave it a second try. So I made a second attempt at this. Okay, and this is what the second attempt looked like. A little more recognizable. But then I had a revelation. I really wasn't following the instructions. I was trying to do my own thing. So I went back to the basics. I went on YouTube, I actually read a book, I actually got the proper materials to make sushi. So this is my, my, my third attempt. This is my third attempt. So I got some sushi rice, okay? I got some avocados, I got some carrots, cut it up, spread it out, use my, use my utensils, okay? I got jiggy with it. I got a little sauce on it, peanut sauce. You know, so I said, like, I'm, I'm really going to do this up. And then I cut it. Now, this looks a little better, doesn't it? Yes. I got my mat on, cut it up. And let's, let's see how this one turns out. Wait for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Took me a lot of work to get there. Took me a lot of work to get there. That's, that's all I got. I haven't gotten any better than that. I might try some today. I don't know. But the, the reason why I show you that is because when we are trying to rehabilitate, when we are trying to create new habits, it takes time. And it's going to be messy. And it's not going to be pretty when we're just starting off. But what I want to tell you is that whatever habit that you started creating during Lent, don't stop it, even if it's not as pretty as you want it to be, because I promise you it's going to lead you to a place where you're going to have deeper roots and be a lot more further in this Christian journey. So let's review. Let's review. Recovery, resuscitation, rehabilitation. Recovery is 
alignment and time. Resuscitation is putting in effort. Rehabilitation is creating habits. Now, the only thing I want you to get is this, is that stop praying for resurrection if you haven't recovered, resuscitated, or rehabilitated. Because it's work for you to do. Now, let's talk about resurrection. Once you have done what you were supposed to do, and we are witnesses of all these things that he did both in Judea and Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and caused him to be seen. Resurrection. Resurrection. I'm done. Good. Thank you. What we have to understand about resurrection is that there is only something that God can do. And there are certain things in your life you simply need to surrender. There's nothing else that can be done. I talked about recovery. I talked about resuscitation. I've talked about uh, rehabilitation. Once you've done all that you can do, let it go. If it's meant to be resurrected, God will resurrect it. But let me tell you another thing. Some things are meant to die. Some things need to stay in the tomb. So you have to have the discernment of stop praying for resurrection on things that should be dead. That should have been dead a long time ago. And once you really understand what resurrection is about, you understand the beauty of surrender. You can't control nobody. You can't make nobody do what they don't want to do. Some, some situations are out of your control. So what you have to understand is I, I've, I've, I've tried, I've recovered, I've, I've resuscitated, I've rehabilitated. Listen, this, this thing, maybe it should die, but if it should die, God, let it die. If it needs to be resurrected, God, do what you do. But I've done my part. Now you can experience the power of resurrection because you've done what you should have done. You've allowed to die what should die. And now you are trusting God with the rest. The one thing I found is that if you do your part, God will do God's part. So I don't know if that was eight minutes, but I'm done. All right. God bless you. Loving God, we thank you so much for your community. And we thank you so much for the opportunity to be better than we were yesterday. Where recovery is needed, may we recover. Where resuscitation is needed, may we experience that. Where rehabilitation is needed, may we experience that. And dear Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of resurrection, a power that only you have and a power that we surrender to you. We live in the power of this resurrection in this moment, not only in this day, but in this season and in this life. In Christ's name we pray, so be it. Amen.